Oh, hello there, lovers and friends. You guys should know this is gonna be an intimate video when you see me sitting down in a mess and holding a notebook. That means I've been thinking and I have some things I wanna get off my chest. This video is titled, Why You're Not Beyonce, but it takes a different approach than I think the majority of us have been taking of late. So I started doing my counseling service again and that is something that I've been doing off and on for two years and whenever I know I can be consistently available on Sundays, I open it back up. So right now, if you are interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, that service is available for as long as it possibly can be. Um, and a consistent theme that has come up on various calls has been the whole Beyonce homecoming thing. And people comparing or feeling disappointed in themselves as a result of the fact that, well, Beyonce can do it and look what she's accomplished through discipline. And that is the ingredient that we attribute majority of her success to, right? How hard working that she is. But today I choose to be devil's advocate and give you four other reasons why you're probably not Beyonce and why majority of those have nothing to do with how much effort you put in or how much of a hustler you are. We're gonna break these reasons down obviously into longer parts, but I'm gonna just give you a little snapshot because I want you to stay for the whole video. Number one is you ain't got the answer sway and no one else around you has the answers either. Number two, you're so focused on being Beyonce and you forget that she had to be a part of Destiny's Child first. Number three, you don't have the same 24 hours as Beyonce. I, you've probably seen that meme, I see that meme, and every time that I do, I have an argument with that person in my head about it. When they say, you have the same 24 hours as Beyonce, they ain't got the answer, Sway. I liken Beyonce not to a person, but to a corporation. Beyonce, to me, is what Walmart is. I don't attribute Walmart's success to one individual's hard work. I think of it as a collection of exceptional minds who stayed in their lane to contribute to the overall brand that is Walmart. Number four, you don't have the time and you don't have the money, nor do you have the likely success of Beyonce. So for example, with Beyonce homecoming, everyone's like, Beyonce spent eight months working towards a goal. When's the last time that you did that? Well, when's the last time that you knew for certain something would be big enough in order for you to put aside everything else to devote yourself to that? The reason why majority of us have to do multiple projects or put our eggs in different baskets is because we don't know which basket is going to end up being sturdy. I just want to pause for a quick little second to say the gist of this video is that we now live in a society that says that if you are not as successful or as productive as you want to be currently, it's probably because you're lazy. But the truth of the matter is for 90% of people, that's just not the case. And they aren't telling the truth about the actual path to success. And as many of you guys know, I have a book coming out called The Game of Desire. And through that book, I have a pre-order campaign and a private podcast you can get access to. And this week, week's topic is all about who the fuck are you actually stepping into your right to greatness, your claim to fame. And at the end of this video, I'll give you a little snippet of what's to come there. Getting back to why you're not Beyonce. The first one is you ain't got the answer sway and no one you knows has them either. On one of my counseling calls, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but I spoke with a young lady whom knew that she was an exceptional baker. She knew she was really, really good at baking and she felt that was her God-given gift. It was her purpose, it was her talent. Um, and she was young, 22 years old, didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs, was the first person in her family to graduate from college. I think she graduated with like a business associate and now was looking at herself and saying, I'm lazy. I am lazy because I have everything that I need to be successful and yet my cookies are not in stores and yet my cupcakes are not world renowned. What's wrong with me? Why am I so unmotivated? And I was like, why do you think you have all the tools? What about your life? What about your upbringing, the circle that you're surrounding with makes you feel like you have all the tools necessary to become the person that you haven't yet been and that nobody around you has yet been. A lot of us don't have the answers. We didn't grow, unless you grew up in a farming family and your ultimate goal is to be a farmer, then yes, you might have the answers because you were raised within a dynamic, you understood the business models, you could learn from your parents' mistakes as well as their triumphs, collect that information together, and on top of that, if you're a farmer, you probably know other farmers, and so that business 
is second nature to you? In that case, yes, you might have the answers, but majority of us, why would you know what it takes to create a multi-billion dollar company all on your own? Majority of us don't grow up in families who have done that thing previously to us. And so we are essentially pioneering our own path and that's difficult. And it's not just hard work. It's not just a strong work ethic. It's not just having a goal and a dream. It's having a process, a tried and true process. It's having a network and connection to a great network. And so if you find yourself in a position where you know what you want and you have the passion, but you're not getting the results, it's because you're probably not within the right system. You gotta surround yourself, and this will lead us nicely into point number two. You're focused on being Beyonce and not a member of Destiny's Child. In order for you to be successful at something, you have to surround yourself with like minds. That notion that we, again, can just do it without having a support system of people around us is a very, very Americanized way of thinking um, that I don't think services majority of people's actual success stories. Beyonce didn't become Beyonce because she really wanted to. From the age of like four years old, her parent who decided to devote their life to her success in this one specific field, took it upon themselves to impart all of their tools, all of their contacts, all of their efforts and wisdom through their 30 plus years of life onto a young child. So from a very young age, she was being educated and groomed to find success in this area. Then he started partnering her up with other people who had the same thing. And maybe their parents had different contacts and different access. And now they had a network of support of people who all had one shared goal. And leading on to that point, I didn't even write these in order to piggyback off each other, but they're just flowing so seamlessly. But number three is you don't have the same 24 hours as Beyonce because Beyonce is not just Beyonce. When a Beyonce 24 hours is the people who run Ivy Park, the people who run her production, the people who are negotiating with Netflix to get her special aired on there, the people who are designing her costumes, the people who are um, arranging her band for her, her choreographers. So in that 24 hours, there might be 200 plus people who did the Beyonce. When you have 24 hours, it's just you probably. Um, I'm at a place now where I've just recently begun to Beyonce my 24 hours, meaning there are some days guys that I suck. Like, I'm just not motivated, I'm not in the mood, I just wanna go play tennis or make love or chill or eat bad. I don't wanna do nothing. But I hired an assistant, I have a manager, I have an agent, I have a lawyer, I have a PR team, I have a publishing company. And so on days when I'm slacking, someone else who was a part of my team or my zeitgeist might have had a killer day for me. And so a successful day for me is not contingent on my effort. And that is Beyonce to the billionth degree, right? Like she could probably at this point in her career afford to take months off at a time. And that month that she took off might be her most profitable month to date, depending on what her team members did. And we can work up to that point, but we shouldn't be expected to be held to the same standard as that point. Rolling through it, rolling through it. The reason why that you're not Beyonce is because you don't have Beyonce expectations for yourself and nobody else places Beyonce expectations on you. I know this firsthand. Um, again, comparing my first and my second book, somebody recently asked me, how did I find the discipline and motivation to finish my book? I didn't need to search very far because if I didn't, I would be sued. I was contractually obligated. I had several people depending on me. I had to sign something before I even put pen to paper that agreed I would complete it and I would complete it along a certain timeline. There is a much bigger difference between doing something because if you don't, there'll be consequences and doing something without any notion of consequences, without any accountability, with no one caring whether you do or don't. I think back to the time that I wrote my first book where I sat in my living room, I failed a year of college in dedication to something I didn't know would get sold and two, I had no guarantee that anything would happen with it and nobody cared. As a matter of fact, at the time, no one wanted me to be writing that book. My family was not enthusiastic about their youngest daughter writing a sex book and yet somehow I found the courage some of the time to be progressive. 
at this point in my life, it's easy for me to be motivated. It's easy for me to complete tasks because I have expectations associated with those, because I have assistance, I have contracts, and above all else, I have a certain level of money I have to make based on the lifestyle I have surrounded myself with. So if you are an individual who is trying to get to Beyonce-like status, but yet you didn't sign a million dollar deal with Coachella that states you're gonna put on this crazy show, don't be surprised if you don't feel that same gumption to get up every single day. Instead of hating yourself or beating down on yourself for the days that you don't feel motivated, be in awe of any day that you do. If you want to live a life in pursuit of your highest potential for love, sex, and life in general, your concept of self should be ever evolving. And that is why defining yourself through your power to change is essential. Now I know thinking of yourself as a creator with infinite possibilities sounds like some hokey shit. But despite not knowing you personally, I absolutely know that you are an exceptional creator for one simple reason. Every single word that I am currently saying, someone else created. Really think about that. There's a single person out there who designed every item of clothing that you're currently wearing. The place you call home, some person constructed. The job you rushed to get to on time, some person founded. The sauce you put on your french fries, and even your concept of love, another human being, no greater, no more capable, no more awesome than you, made that shit up. So what's stopping you from working towards making your own shit up if you're not happy with what you currently have? You might be coming up with a bunch of man-made reasons why this can't be true and why you are unsalvageably exactly who you are today.